I'm Dr. Vernon Neppe and I'm meeting here with Dr. Edward Close, a physicist and mathematician par excellence, and we are discussing some very complex ideas in relation to nine-dimensional spin and the mathematical derivation of the Kabibo angle. I'm going to ask Dr. Edward Close, who has pioneered the calculus of distinctions and dimensional extrapolation, to amplify an important concept that comes up when we talk about the Kabibo angle, namely the mixing angle, because we sometimes refer to the Kabibo mixing angle just to mention when one does a detailed search for this even in textbooks of theoretical physics and over the internet it is very difficult to find a clear explanation of what the mixing angle is and Dr. Close is going to clarify why this is so it's not an easy concept. So go ahead, Dr. Edward Close. Yes, thank you, Dr. Neppe. Um, the, to clarify this, it, it goes back to the way in which uh, mathematics has been applied to quantum physics. Uh, the Lagrangian and Hamiltonian are the basic mathematical tools. Uh, to give you an idea of what that is, uh, what those things are, they're um, a Lagrangian of a, of, of a um, quantum system is an algebraic function that summarizes the known measurable dynamic parameters of the system in the form of vector fields. Uh, this includes forces acting on the system and the boundary conditions of the system. It's uh, also called the Hamiltonian, sometimes called the energy function because it represents the kinetic energy of a system of particles. Now, the problem is that in applying it in a general sense this way, uh, the concept of dimension and the concept of, of uh, content are intermixed in a sort of pseudo multi-dimensional space that uh, is not real and you can have um, it's not real in the sense that it doesn't apply directly to uh, uh, real dimensions in in space, time, and consciousness, so that when you come up with with certain angles and uh, pseudo um, dimensional concepts like the mixing angle, you lose the connection between what that how that relates to actual dimensional concepts like rotation and spin and that's what we're trying to clarify. Uh, it's been called a mixing angle uh, partly because the energy, mass and energy of what are considered elementary particles, the fermions, uh, all have something in common and seem to be able to change from uh, say an up quark to a down quark or something like this under certain circumstances and those circumstances are then called mixing angles which uh, is a bit misleading because angle makes you think of uh, a space a, a concept of three-dimensional or four-dimensional space when in fact it is mixing in uh, variables of, of content and impact and that's where the confusion arises so uh, what's called generally called a mixing angle has to be clarified by relating it back to actual dimensions and separating the dimensional variables from the content or substance variables or the action variables like momentum. 
I hope this helps. It's it is a, a, a subtle concept, and we are uh, really clarifying um, quantum physics by taking this approach. And uh, uh, I think once this is understood and the differentiation is made between dimensions and and uh, other types of variables, then these concepts of uh, angles and so forth that are, are thrown about as if they were something related to real space, time, and consciousness will be clarified. And thank you, Dr. Close. And of course, we could add in that there are other kinds of mixing angles, such as the Weinberg mixing angle as well. It's not just purely Kabibo. Uh, what do you think about the term mixing in retrospect? Should it have been used? Uh, I think it's a confusing term uh, because it sort of implies this concept that that mass and energy can form in any one of the so-called elementary or, or fun particles under certain conditions. And uh, the idea of an angle is related to vector spaces uh, which are not necessarily real space in terms of dimensions, but have mixed in the concept of content and impact. And uh, so I think it's a misunderstanding from the beginning, and they probably shouldn't be called mixing angles. Or there's a much, should be a much clearer way of, of explaining what they are. They are angles in the vector space of rotating or, or changing one type of, of fundamental particle to another. And it's different uh, for the different particles but it does not relate directly to dimensions. It should, it's the basic confusion. It should be, uh, it, it relates to dimensions, but not in the direct manner that Mig Angle seems to imply. Uh, Dr. Close, uh, one component that people sometimes ask about is the fact that on the one hand we may be talking about other kinds of mathematical techniques Lagrangians and Hamiltonians and we might be talking about aspects pertaining to tensor calculus and on the other hand we seem to be using a simple Euclidean system whereby all our calculations are based on real numbers in terms of this nine-dimensional spin is there any contradiction to this and how can we justify a real number calculation in relation to uh, nine-dimensional spin derivations given that we also have used other systems pertaining to ideas pertaining to space being real numbers to time being based on imaginary numbers and to consciousness, a very broad and complex concept in itself, being related to complex numbers? Yes, um, excellent question. And uh, to clarify, uh, in order to bring people who are conversant with uh, the um, field of quantum physics and relativity at, in the current uh, state of science, we have to clarify uh, what Hamiltonians and Lagrangians are uh, and how they relate to our uh, somewhat more simple concepts of uh, variables of content uh, extent and and impact and uh, when we when we do this then <clears throat> the um, it's interesting because uh, very 
basic concepts like the Pythagorean theorem and uh, Fermat's last theorem <coughs> enter in to the explanation and the problem is that people who are using the current system uh, Lagrangians and uh, and Hamiltonians and uh, algebras like uh, Lie algebras and Clifford and Grassmann algebras are still confusing variables of, uh, of content and impact with variables of extent as if they were also uh, dimensional and they're not so this is what we're trying to clarify and in terms of our nine-dimensional spin uh, theory it is in many ways a very simple theory but it is that because it uh, eliminates the confusion of, of uh, uh, bringing of confusing uh, uh, other types of variables with dimensions. Once you weed out the the non-dimensional variables that are mixed into the current treatment through the mathematics, uh, the matrix and vector uh, analysis of Hamiltonians and Lagrangians, you see a, a simple system of nine dimensions which relate to the uh, number theory, theory fields of real, imaginary, and complex numbers in a very straightforward way. So I think that this is an important clarification. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dr. Vernon Neppe. And it has been such a pleasure to have this opportunity to talk to you today.